evening, afternoon. Um, thank you for coming. Um, we're, we have prepared a presentation, if you will. Uh, there is a lot of information to disseminate. We're going to go pretty quickly because we would like to mostly hear from you. So if we, uh, if we say something that um, you want us to circle back to when we get into the Q&A, or the, actually the comments, uh, please don't hesitate to say, what did you say when back in the beginning? So we have a scripted presentation and some slides behind us that uh, folks will be presenting. We hope that will take about 20 minutes, and then we'll be able to open it up for the public hearing to take comments. Uh, so I apologize that I'm going to read this. <laughs> uh, welcome and thank you for coming tonight, and thank you to all that have attended earlier, written or otherwise contributed comments and suggestions in previous Planning Commission meetings. The Commission has been engaged in this process of renewing the bylaws for several years. From determining a process to tackle and modernize them to moving to then moving through a methodology in a thoughtful and reasonable manner. It has involved countless hours of volunteer time. Along the way, the Planning Commission has experienced changes in commissioners and changes in town staffing, all of which contribute to a broader set of ideas. These commissioners here tonight bring a plethora of experiences, residency in our town, land use planning, and GIS technology backgrounds to the thoughtful recommendations in the UDB phase one documents. And you'll hear us refer to UDB, that's Unified Development Bylaws phase one. These regulations are not final. Our goal here tonight is to continue taking public input on the process, on the proposed regulations and bylaws, and to use that input to make changes that, in our judgment, is appropriate. In fairness to the, to the Commission, we need to discuss your input before we can make those decisions. Please don't expect us to be answering your questions or revising the document itself tonight. Um, I'd like to make some introductions. As I said, my name is Martha Staskis. I'm chair of the commission. Uh, to my left is Katie Gallagher, our vice chair, Mary Cohen, and Dana Allen. Billy Victor is also on the commission and was not able to be here tonight. And for those of you who have not yet met our tremendous planning and zoning team, we have Neil Leitner back here as our planning director. And we have Mike Bishop here at the table who will be here for about 45 minutes and then has to depart as our zoning administrator. Um, from the public hearing notice, I just want to state the purpose of this meeting. We're here tonight to convene the first of two public hearings to obtain public feedback regarding proposed updated zoning bylaws, the Unified Development Bylaws Phase 1. The second public hearing will be held Thursday, March 14th, 2024. These bylaws supersede the town and village of Waterbury zoning regulations as amended through May 16, 2016. We'll refer to those as the 2016 zoning regulations. It's only for the downtown, mixed use, neighborhood, campus, commercial industrial, residential one, and conservation floodplain zoning districts depicted in the zoning district map. And they are included in section 1611. The zoning districts in phase one are bound to the south of I-89, I north of the Winooski River, and the east-west by the town boundaries of Bolton and Middlesex. All of the requirements of the 2016 zoning regulations with respect to application processing, review procedures, including but not limited to the zoning, permit, issuance, and, des and design, conditional use, site plan, and subdivision review continue to apply in the UDB phase one zoning districts. Any development that requires that including that requiring site plan review shall meet in addition to section 301 
the standards and requirements of these bylaws. These bylaws supersede the, will supersede the interim bylaws for the downtown zoning district that were adopted in April 26, 2021 once they go through and be, are adopted by the select board. So we have a process that we're going through, okay? But we want to just be really clear, this is uh, only for the phase one section, which is this downtown, basically the downtown area. And you'll see it come up on the maps. Um, who's next? Mary. <laughs> <laughs> We really appreciate you all coming out tonight. And if you have a question or comment, um, we're going to ask you to, you know, kind of take turns, keep to a two-minute time limit. If you, if a question comes up, those, all those little um, facsimiles of an index card, <laughs> the pieces of paper. If you'd like to leave a comment, that either we don't have time to get to it, but I think we probably will with the number of people here today. If we have, uh, we're gonna have a two minute time limit, as I said, if you have more that you wanna say, you can come back. Um, we have a sign up sheet for speaking, but I don't know if we really yeah. actually need to do that with a small crowd. So we were kind of prepared for various sizes. It's all unknown. But this, as Martha said, this is the first of, uh, two public hearings, and because it's an official public hearing, we really need you to state your name and um, part of town that you live in, if you'd like. And what, I'm not sure what's on the screen behind me. Okay. She's Logistics. Just following okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're following All right. Her. I've been riding her so, Neil. <laughs> good, good, good. So the key information is, you know, Neil Leitner it, as an email and telephone number if any questions come up for you and as martha said we're still working on this so we consider input we've already made some changes from um, our first informational sessions we had in the fall and our hope is to be able to turn this over to the select board in april we have um we're gonna we have a I was going to try, try to talk about the components, but I think without seeing what they are, it's just a bunch of words. But on the town website, we have um, those. I'm just going to I read think from if here. You, yeah, there you go. I, it's, well, it's a little different, so I'm just, I should watch He's gonna data. Follow, yeah. Okay. He's going to follow you. <laughs> My apologies. So, um, Background for the revision, there's, a, there's some good information on the town website about why we're doing this and sort of what our um, overarching goals and, and objectives are. The draft document is there for you to read and look at, and then there's a slider map of illustrating the proposed zoning district revisions. And when we say slider map, you can look at a part of town, a street, your own property, what it was zoned in, what it currently is zoned in, and what we're proposing that the zoning changes are. We have also a link on our the planning and zoning website that will direct you to um, story maps and storyboards and some illustrations, some of which you're able to look at here, the dimensional standards. These were done by a consulting group, SE group, um, who's helped us with public outreach. And um, we were able to do that through a bylaw modernization grant from the state. So I think that's all just logistically, I will be the timekeeper, but um, we'll try to go through the questions and comments, um, to get everybody in. Dana? Dana? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, great. So uh, as has been, I'm gonna stand up, I can't sit down. <laughs> um, as has been discussed, this is the phase one area, so we're not talking about the entirety of town. So just to clarify again. Um, can you bring it back to the map? Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so phase one area, it's primarily the downtown area. You can see um, bounded by the highway and the river, uh, and then it does extend out. So again, bounded by the highway and the river. So that's the phase one area that we're talking about. Um, next slide. So the, the background of the primary goals of this um, are essentially to, bre to become in line with the 2018 town plan. Our pre-existing regulations were 2016, town plan was published in 2018. So this has been an ongoing process. 
um, to basically update these bylaws to be in line with the goals of that 2018 plan. And we did pay special attention to that plan when developing these bylaws. So if you have any questions, that's a great document to read. Um, but one of the things that we really wanted to do in this is, you know, it talks a lot about housing density and commercial uh, vibrance in the downtown. So that's a big part of these bylaws. Um, there's also compliance with recent state activities, so S100 or Act 47, which is the Housing Act. We're not going to get into the specifics of that this evening, but that does include special provisions for downtown areas like ours that are on water and sewer, uh, provisions primarily for residential development. Um, and so again, we're trying to come into line with recent legislation with these bylaws. Um, I said increase housing density, diverse mix of uses, combined uses on the same parcel within the same building. Again, we want to give people flexibility and diversity uh, in the downtown that's so important for us. Um, smart growth principles, this is something that's been consistent in Vermont development for years, but we're trying again to densify in a way that makes great use of space while also recognizing that there's some challenges, um, notably um, flood resilience um, after 2023. I don't know if you're like me, but you have PTSD from flooding. <laughs> and so we want to recognize that we need to do something about that to the greatest degree possible. We do have flood hazard regulations that are pre-existing. Those are part of these bylaws as well, not specifically addressed in these. Um, can we go to the next slide? So. Uh, we did try to simplify, so we're limiting the number of zoning districts. We're actually reducing the total number of zoning districts, and so we're kind of combining a lot of uses and things like that. So we're trying to streamline this process for the average user. Um, really, one of the things is that we're giving people a bit more flexibility to build um, more on their parcels, smaller parcels. We're giving people the ability to build a bit higher than in the past. And so I really encourage you to look at the dimensional standards um, you know, pre post like 2016 versus these bylaws and think about that. We really want to give people the opportunity to use more of their land in this phase one area if possible. Um, so that's spreading out and spreading up. Um, floodplain challenges, acknowledging those. Oh, can you go back? Sorry. God, Neil. <laughs> we didn't practice, did we? <laughs> um, yeah. No, we go back. Back, back. Let's hit the back. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, right. And then uh, neighborhoods, um, that's a big important part of this. This is our residential core. But we also want to provide flexibility for certain uses within that that's not just housing. Um, and we also want to provide the development review board with additional clarity uh, in their process. They've got a big job. And so we're trying to make their lives easier um, and your lives as well. Next slide. Um, some of the highlighted revisions, home occupations have changed. Um, there's more clarity there, I should say, so definitely review that. Um, I definitely think that looking at building structure heights, uh, increasing in downtown mixed use in the campus district, um, really across the board, look at the dimensional standards and think about that. That's something that's definitely changing between 2016 and now. Um, lot allowances are changing. We're allowing for more development on lots. We're also allowing for smaller lots, generally speaking. Um, again, increasing density. Uh, we've formalized this new campus district. Before we had a campus overlay. Now we have a campus district that is primarily the state-owned parcels. Um, that, in particular, we did allow uh, multifamily housing in that district. Um, again, in recognition of the fact that we do want to develop more housing in our downtown area, and that is a relatively large open space to do that. Um, not going to get into S100 requirements. We do have a lot of things there, um, but there are some things about single family zoning um, in certain areas. Now that goes to duplex in certain cases. Um, again, I really don't want to get into the details of that particular legislation tonight. This is more about our bylaws, but that rides on top of these bylaws. Um, so, and the other big change here um, is that in the new downtown and mixed-use zoning districts, um, single-family dwellings will no longer be allowed. And that, again, is to try to encourage housing density in these areas by having more duplexes or multifamily dwellings in our downtown core. Uh, next slide. So, really, we recommend a review of the appendix. Uh, we are calling it the appendix. It's essentially the use tables. So the use table is organized by districts and then by use on each row. 
and it, it tells you essentially what's allowed in each one of these districts um, by use, what size, whether it's permitted, conditional, or not allowed. Um, and then there are definitions for essentially all of those uses. So if you're confused as to what something might be, please go to the definitions and see what that is. But review the use tables and also definitely review the dimensional standards tables as those will have a big impact on development and those are big changes. Um, and that's me. I think that's you. Thank you. Thanks, Dana. Okay, so we're just gonna fly through the different zoning districts that we have. The zoning districts, there's changes in names that we'll talk about. Dana just went through some of the, the higher level changes. Um, boundaries, purpose statements. So we're just gonna go through the purpose statement because um, I think it's helpful to just get that context of what we are trying to achieve for each district. Um, but as we mentioned before, one of the, the overarching goals of the process was to streamline the multiple uh, districts that we had already into a fewer number and making them a bit more flexible for what people could do on their properties. Um, so um, one thing I just want to mention as well is that in trying to follow kind of best planning practices, that another overarching goal was to increase densities within our downtown, kind of having that core and then have it spread out um, into, um, as you saw on the map before, kind of on the either end we have that conservation floodplain district. And so development is, is getting more concentrated and um, more dense as you go to the center of town. You want to mention these? At the table. Sure, yeah, so if folks didn't see already on the table, there's um, the dimensional standards for each of the districts, so those will provide a lot more details that I'm not going to talk yeah. through because we could talk about it forever, um, but that is, is helpful. And also, um, as you mentioned, all of this information is on the website as well. Or actually, sorry, we can, sorry, stay in downtown district for one second. Um, so downtown district hasn't changed too much in this, that red um, section, just as a note, that is also part of our designated downtown. So that's a lot of what uh, the downtown district is based on. Um, and here we are trying to concentrate our commercial, our residential, other compatible uses in this area while maintaining our traditional um, pattern, scale, and massing and um, supporting a pedestrian-oriented village center. Um, next one, please. So then kind of as we go out on, um, you still have that red in the middle is our downtown. Um, orange, if you can see, sorry, the colors are a little mixed together, um, but that's gonna be our mixed use districts. Um, and here we're trying to allow for a variety of housing options. Um, and as we mentioned, a mix of small scale commercial service and other compatible uses. So again, kind of tapering out, but still maintaining and enhancing that kind of traditional uh, village character. Next slide, please. So then we get into the neighborhood and that's gonna be in those yellow sections. Um, so this is a bit more of our, of our residential neighborhoods. Um, still near our, our public services, infrastructure, transportation. We're still within this walking distance to our downtown. Um, so we do want to allow for some higher density housing as well as neighborhood compatible um, uses. Um, so again, uh, the idea here is, is trying to make it compatible with um, these areas as we're tapering out from the downtown. And then next slide, going out a bit further, residential one um, is in those kind of teal areas. Yeah, thank you, Neil. Um, so out, um, outside on the edges there, and this is our, our residential uses in, in this more kind of rural setting, larger lot sizes, um, while also trying to minimize uh, development impacts on our environmental quality out in those areas, which if you can see um, as well, a lot of that is overlaid in blue because those are flood prone areas. Uh, next slide, please. So campus, um, as we mentioned, this is changing a, a campus, previous campus overlay to a new campus district. And this is um, 
the, the area with the state offices. And here we are wanting to protect those architectural and historic resources that's in that beautiful area, um, but also uh, support it as a place for um, potential commerce or housing, um, multifamily housing in particular, um, in thinking about future potential uses. Next slide, please. So then we have commercial industrial, so that's in purple, again, kind of in on the, on the edges, but also Pilgrim Park, um, close to downtown. Um, and so here we're looking to support new or expanded businesses in this area that's served by um, uh, infrastructure, and this is including manufacturing and um, in some cases allowing for new multifamily development. And then next slide, please. So this is the final district. This is our new conservation floodplain. It's that light green um, that's on the edges and also on the south side of the campus district. And so this is um, floodplain areas that are largely already undeveloped. Um, and so we're just trying to make sure that we are conserving that land. Um, and maintain it in a primarily unimproved kind of natural state. Um, and I think that is our last slide, although I do want to mention that we also have a design review overlay district that um, already ex exists. We are updating that, and uh, there's new location boundaries across the downtown in mixed use districts. As well as it's the all campus inclusive. District. Thank you. Yeah, yes. It's all inclusive um, of the downtown okay. mixed use and campus. Can I have a point of clarification? Where, where, where are the boundaries of the downtown? It used to just be Bachelor Street to partway down North Main. Now is it all the two mile, no, no, no. Two mile stretch? Oh, okay. Um, see the red area in here? So it goes from the. Oh, I can't reach up there. Tell me, you need to give me a street. <laughs> okay. Main Street. <laughs> South Main Street. And I'm too close to, to the route. The to roundabout. Yeah, to the roundabout up there, just shy of it, the bridge, mm -hmm. all the way down to Park Row. Park, park Row. Road. This okay. is Park Row. Here's the park. Okay, the so train station. So it's downtown, the village. Where's the village, the downtown? Do, so, where do I live? So we're we're <laughs> conflating. So this no, is this, this is, is where. Let's put we're up the yeah. slider map, okay? Just hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Let's put up the slider map. What's really what's what's going to create a little confusion here? We understand is the fact that we have reduced the number of zoning districts. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to reiterate is the storyboards. What we call storyboards around the room are of the districts that we're all, we're talking about tonight. So when if we break up early or if you have some questions, go, you can go look at those in particular. But yeah, can there you go. Can I so uh, hold on. So the solid red is downtown. The uh, orange is mixed use. The yellow is what we call neighborhood now. The blue is the new campus district. Purple is commercial industrial and then this green is called um, conservation floodplain and i want to note that the conservation floodplain parcels are uh, we looked at the specific parcel ownership and they're basically gmp and the railroad their utility and town owned parcels so we're not impacting a private residence parcel because the flood Conservation flood zone district really has no development in it. Right. Okay, and we didn't want to be impacting any private landowners. I, I so, so um, before I just want to give the board, the commission, another chance to wrap up any other comments, and then we would like to circle through the questions that you folks may have. We're small enough. Um, we had planned that we would like you to come up to the podium. I think if we can do it just sitting, we're fine with that. But we need to just do it on an, on an orderly process because we're also taking notes on the comments. And so we want to get the comments recorded. 
Um, and I would ask that you not expect us to give you a, a specific answer or adjustment. We're really here for a public hearing, hearing you folks, okay? Uh, Mary? So the term downtown is used in three different ways for this part of town, is my experience. One is there is a state designated downtown district, and that is really separate from our town zoning. There is, and so we have part of our, our current downtown is state designated, and some of it will stay within the red, the downtown, some of it is mixed use. Some of it is, you know, all of the downtown is not in the state designated. So they don't totally overlap. So that's one doubt. We have a zoning district that we're calling downtown zoning district. We also have, there is currently in the, in the current regulations, there is a downtown design overlay district and we're proposing changes to that in terms of the conditions and the, um, the bylaws, uh, what's allowed, what's, what has to, the DRB has to consider, but we're not calling it downtown design review, we're just calling it design review overlay district. And we have um, matched that to the boundaries in this section of town, zoning district downtown, zoning district mixed use. So we, we don't mean to That's confuse good. you yeah. by saying that there's, you know, down to... I think an easy way to answer this is, are you talking about the mile-long village and the zoning areas within that from... Essentially. Okay. Because you began by saying you're only going to be talking about the downtown. Since I'm on South Main and it's mixed use, I thought, geez, I shouldn't even be here. No, no, no. That's why the downtown gets confusing. The discussion, well, clarify. let's be clear. The discussion tonight for Kathy, the discussion tonight includes everything from the town boundary of Bolton to Middlesex to the Winooski River to the interstate, okay? That's the area of Waterbury Town that we're talking about, okay? Uh, and it's the zoning districts within that er phase one. We call that phase one, okay? Thank you. Sure. Good question. So, I, I, I would, how are you, so you don't so, want the podium. You just I, want to well, call on people? I, right. I would say if you have a question at this point, we could, you could raise your hand, if, as long as we can hear you. <laughs> um, yeah, you have to state your name, and we'd prefer if you just give us an idea of where you live so we can put it in perspective. We, I have a hand behind oh, you. No problem. I, uh, I'm Jeff Whalen. I live on High Street. And I just want to, first of all, uh, thank you guys for everything you're doing. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that you took into consideration a lot of us uh, citizens' uh, ideas and put put uh, High Street and some of those other neighborhoods in the neighborhood district. That was and awesome. Jeff, I'm going to ask you to stand up. I you, care. you may need to come to the podium. I, I, get, <laughs> well, I should do that. You, okay, I come. get this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Especially in my life. Thanks. It's fine. Um, no, but thank you for uh, taking into you know citizens' cons uh, comments and tweaking the, the zones and taking high street and putting that in the neighborhood district. I really appreciate that, and I'm sure my uh, neighbors do too. Uh, going back to we we're just talking about just like what are you considering downtown and what's and then the downtown district. So the all is the all encompassing downtown phase one. Is that gonna be? Is that gonna have an like a downtown overlay district to it for a design review? So the, there is a, there is now, we're proposing a design review overlay district. We call it the DROD, <laughs> just to give it a romantic name. The design review overlay district will include all of the downtown, the red. Downtown zoning district. Oops, what happened to our map? We're getting it. Okay, the, the downtown zoning the district, mis, the downtown zoning district, the mixed use zoning district, and the campus zoning district. Okay. 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 I guess my only comment to that is, Let some you know, zoom away from that, please, <laughs> and then show the entire extent. So this, so just to clarify, just to like show you again. Oh, there it is. Yeah. This area, town boundary to town boundary, river to highway is phase one. That is the, that's what's included in, these, in this bylaw update. 
So that's phase one. So when we talk about what we're updating, we're updating all of phase one. There is an area, the downtown zoning district, which is part of this, and then there's what we colloquially refer to as downtown, this general area. So just so we're clear, phase one, downtown zoning district. Yeah, overlay. Overlay district is in red here and encompasses mixed use, downtown, mixed use, and the campus. Does that clarify? Yeah, no, no okay. I'm good, yeah. Great. And so I guess my comment to that is, I, I know I've mentioned this in past, past meetings and I'm just gonna continue to mention it. I really, I'm, I'm the first to not tell anybody what to do with their property and I really hate that I, that I even have to mention this, but I feel like the entire phase one should have some sort of design review process in place because I feel like it's, I think it's good that we're, we're decreasing setbacks and increasing height limits to allow, to allow us to, to build more. But I think if we're building more, we're amplifying whatever hat comes into our village. And we went through all this process to become the historical downtown Waterbury district. What, what historic value do we have if we don't have any design constraints to protect the natural aesthetics of our village? And the perfect example of that, and I hate to be, to be the dead horse, but you know the the, the nine unit up on High Street, Hill Street, that's that can only get bigger and more amplified, and in my opinion, more atrocious if we don't have some sort of guidelines to constrain how we're building and, and the design behind that process for these other districts. Okay. Also, we just uh, finished. I need your help. We we just uh, updated. Is the is the drive online now? The new map. The no, no the, the requirements. It's part of this. Oh, it is online. Yeah. Yes. So be sure to check online because it just went up recently. Okay. I mean, this is an iterative process for sure. Right. Um, there are design review overlay <laughs> district criteria, and I suggest you look at those specifically. And if you have comments on those with respect to the neighborhood okay. zoning district, let us know. Okay. All right. And, it's, and it's I on think page, we said it. It's on page 31 of the. I want to look at the whole document. Well, let's do it. <laughs> you said go find it, so I'm trying to tell them where it is. Um, uh, we, I think Mary said this before, if you don't provide a comment here tonight written, uh, you can always send it to Neil uh, online. You can always email it to Neil or drop it off at Neil. He, he, he just loves getting that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next. I have a question. Yes, sir. Could you we're gonna say ask your name and come? Oh, I think you can hear me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah. well, my name is Lawrence Dennis. I'm on 10 Randall Street. Quick question on downtown apartment option. Am I reading this correct that it can be six stories? That was my question. 60 feet. So 60 no, feet, but so it says that there's six. I'm just asking is that for clarification. Yeah, is that so, what that means? And we did go through this a lot in, in terms of readability of the bylaws. Mm -hmm. A story is dimensionless. It's mm -hmm. not, there's no number of feet typically associated with it, at least oh, that okay. we can enforce. That makes sense. So we just went with actual dimensions, but yeah, 60 oh, okay. feet is the height limitation in downtown. Okay. Just in the downtown zoning district, right. not in the colloquial downtown. Right. <laughs> Sorry to so beat that. Technically, a, a property, if it met the minimum requirements, somebody could buy that property, tear that property down, and build that size property. Correct? 60 feet. 60 feet. Oh, that, I'm just clarifying. Yep. We, we also, Thank you. We also have more extensive um, requirements for demolishing any property with, within the design overlay district. Clarify? I'm sorry, I took some medication. No, My mouth is no, very I'm, dry, I'm, so I apologize. Um, the design overlay district includes yeah. a component. You want me to do it? Yeah, yeah. Thank so you. the design review mm -hmm. overlay district includes a section about demolition and the requirements necessary if you propose to demolish the building. Oh, good. Okay. That makes sense. And and I don't. We don't need to go into it here, no, but there are fine. specific that, requirements. That you can't just come in and wipe out a building and put right. something. It's going to be a little up. harder. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Especially okay. if it's in a store. That's that's right. our point. Yeah. But that would also follow up with what we talked about with. Uh, properties that are damaged are not being taken care of. That's too. right. Exactly. Thank you. 
I'm going to stand over here because when he was talking and his back was twisted, it was very hard to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple questions. First of all, one is um, I live in a community that you now have changed to mixed use, but yet High Street is staying um, in the neighborhood. We have ten single residences down there that have been there forever now, and now it sounds like, for example, mine's a single residence. If I sell that house, that means somebody can't use that as a single residence anymore? It would change it. it, would, it yes, they can use it as a single residence. Okay, it would be, a, it, they can't change the, they can change the use, but they couldn't go back to it. It becomes what so, we would call a non-conforming use. Right. So it can, it's allowed to continue to exist to be what it is, but if someone wanted to do something fundamentally different with it, they couldn't necessarily expand it into a larger single family dwelling or something like that. So it doesn't preclude the use, it preserves the use as a non-conformity. And then going forward, if someone wanted to you know, build something different, single family dwelling and mixed use wouldn't be an option for them. Okay. So duplex But it or, could be a duplex. Okay. The other problem I have is that the, there's a huge difference between the setbacks in the neighborhood district and the mixed use district. And the biggest one is the front. And I know I've been in up here meetings where you keep telling me, Kathy, there's no, most people would you know, build right up to the front anyways. Well, maybe during the historical time, that was, you know, when the roads were smaller, that probably wasn't the case. But I did send you guys some pictures and I talked to Neil about what's happening on my end of town. First of all, everybody has to back into the street. Okay, we moved, spent several thousand dollars moving our carriage shed so that our tenants could come in, drive, turn around, and because of that, we lost lawn space. A lot of the places down there don't have any lawn space. And now you're saying that they can pretty much, I think, park on their lawn, right? I mean, what's to stop them from doing what some people have done already and it created a parking lot on their front lawn, which looks terrible. Okay, that's a timer, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I got the notes. Sorry, I'm taking notes on it. All right, I got them. Thank you, Kathy. I'll come back after. <laughs> no, that's, this is great information. Did you get the pictures, though? I didn't get yes. the pictures, did I? I sent them. Nobody, Nobody got them? I believe, I believe I did see those. I think Neil sent those to us. I'll send them again. Way back. Way back. Oh, way back. oh okay. I follow yes. a question. Driveways are included. I was reading that. Can you clarify what that means? It says driveways included in updated bylaws. Does that mean? What are you looking at? Oh, uh, this is neighborhood zoning. Okay. It has it right in front. Does that mean you calculate the driveway in the square footage of usage? Is so, that what that means? That lot coverage. The way that the way that the dimensional standards now work is that previously in the 2016 regs we had a sort of a, a density requirement right and that sort of limited or dictated to some degree development now we went in the direction of doing a simpler lot coverage mm -hmm. okay. so saying that in any particular zone for any particular lot you can have x percentage coverage right and so That's it right. ranges anywhere from like full coverage in the downtown right. district so. to less Included in that coverage calculation, lot coverage calculation, are essentially any impervious surfaces. Mm -hmm. And so we use the state's definition of impervious surface, but essentially that's any development. So buildings, but also driveway footprints, parking lots, um, patios are also included. Um, things like decks are not. So anything where rain doesn't soak into the ground right. is now considered part of lot coverage. Okay. So if you had a relatively small house and a relatively large parking lot or driveway, that could impact your lot yes. coverage and, and vice versa. Right. You know? Um, but so we want to keep that green we want to have some green space here. Right. <laughs> so that's why we're maximizing the lot okay. coverage. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you for the sure. Please. So what about North Main Street here? Does your, the current can you overlay stay in, Mike Merchant? Thanks. Thanks. Does the current overlay district, is that going to apply to the new zoning exactly how it's written now? The, the design, design review, review yeah. overlay district will apply to the downtown district of I understand mixed that. use As in written? the campus. No, no, we As have being new proposed here. We have new regulations. New regulations. Right. Okay. So once the select board 
either approves or disapproves of these proposed bylaws, this is what will take effect. It doesn't take effect until it's approved by the select board. Are those online too, the current proposed it's page rules? 30, yeah, page 31 is the design review overlay. Can you <laughs> hold on, yeah. over Kathy, time. just a second. Did we answer your question? Yeah, I just, I find that a lot of that can be, rulings on, on the overlay district can be inconsistent. Like, is it so clear that they can't be, like, are the rules the rules? Or I mean, are, are there, are there um, can you get like a, like, I, I, don't know. I know what you're headed. So there are, it, it, we've tried, we took that, we had a lot of conversation about specificity versus not, uh, paint color right. versus siding, and right. those are, and they're listed. Materials. Right, and so I really don't want to comment on them specifically, right. you really need to read them, right. but it, there is an exemption in there specifically to paint color, that's the one that always sticks in my brain, siding, roofing, Okay, whether it's a routine maintenance, whether it's a, a significant, we, we tried at the request of the DRB, quite frankly, was to be as clear, um, not to use descriptive adjectives <laughs> that say, you know, major change, minor, what right. constitutes a major change, right? right? There is, like, is there room for variances there? Is there? Right, right. So tell What's, us if we. What, what page is it on? 31. It starts on page 31. We, we try to be both more specific and not as prescriptive. Arbitrary. Right. <laughs> and arbitrary, right. Right. Correct. Okay. As many meetings as I've been to, I still don't understand what the overlay means. Is that your take? Can you explain it in terms of a few bits? Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, we have base zoning districts, mm -hmm. which in, in which, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had it clear in my head, it's not coming out. Um, the base zoning districts lay out just sort of the base of what can be done in that district. And then an overlay district is exactly as it sounds. It overlays on top of those base zoning district requirements. So think about it like a base, the base zoning districts, uh, downtown mixed use neighborhood, they have a list of allowed uses, conditional uses that start you, okay? And then, for example, I'm just going to read the purpose statement of the design overlay, design review overlay district, establishes specific building form, design standards, and a higher level of review for proposed development for those areas of Waterbury recognized as having particular historical, architectural, or cultural value. So we're, and the purpose of that is to protect and enhance those architectural and historical resources to encourage a consist, consistently high standard of design in, in new construction and renovations to support and sustain the pedestrian-oriented downtown, and to strengthen the community's vitality in the downtown mis mixed use district's historic function as a center for commerce, industry, government, and housing. And lastly, to encourage the new construction that will reinforce the qualities of the existing physical character while allowing freedom of expression compatible with the architectural vernacular. So we didn't want to say you can't have a pink house, but if it's not consistent with what's in the downtown mixed user campus, then you're probably not gonna have a pink house, okay? It needs to be consistent with the architectural vernacular of the community. So the overlay basically needs additional rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, okay. it, it's yeah. to try to maintain the existing, I don't, I'm gonna use this carefully, character of the town. But we also have an over, the floodplain is, it, regulations are in essence an overlay yeah. because, and they apply all, you know, to that um, FEMA map. So we have a couple overlays. That's what, you know, changes are in here. Are there other questions? That, well, wait, we got them coming here. <laughs> Mike, you want to come up? Uh, I think I can do it from here as well. My name is Mike Hedges, or it's William Michael Hedges if you're really getting formal. Um, and I live on Henry Huff Road, so not in this phase one area.
but I just want to be involved and uh, curious, and I do thank you folks for the very hard work that this has taken to get here, because I, I know it has. Um, I'm just curious about that uh, overlay review dis uh, overlay review area, and it just you just stated that it uh, has a higher level of review, but it didn't sound like there was any review DRB review outside of that district. Anything? Uh, let's see. I'm going to get this right. Make sure I get this right. Yeah. Get it right. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, application to the town. All applications require site plan approval. Right. This would be another level of approval in the applicable zoning districts of mixed use downtown and campus in phase one. So my other question is, this overlay district, how does that relate to the historic designated district? They, they, they could be overlapping, but they're not. We um, not exactly, because that's a designation outside of our zoning. Right. Right. We've not addressed, we're not making any changes to the historic district. If you have a historic, yeah, districts, thank you, Mary. If you have a, a national register, not, you know, I'm going to say this wrong, national register of historic places mm -hmm. home, you're following those requirements, okay? We're not addressing that here. District as well, right? Mm -hmm. right. And homes outside of that. And and mm -hmm. some other There's just other like spot districts. Yes. Yeah. Is that get it? Question. Okay. Wait, let's see. Do we answer you your question? Particularly sensitive to that historic district when you made the overlay area. No, no. This okay. is to capture those yeah. three zone districts. Yep. Yeah. I'm wondering where the, the village historical you district is. Can you say your name? Valerie Rogers, South Main Street. Thank East you. I am wondering about the district of the village historical district. And also, is the overlay district um, like more important than the district? Like, which one trumps which? They're, they're working tandem. They're out of this. So think about the base zoning district is primarily what is an allowed use, what is a not allowed use, what's a conditional use, what the use of it, what size, and what the dimensional standards are that follow that district. So we've talked about setbacks, we've talked about lot coverage, those kind of dimensional criteria. And then the design review overlay district addresses more of what are the requirements of the structure or what material, when a, when a change needs to be made, uh, excuse me, when, a cha when you're proposing a, re a, a repair or a change to the structure, what, what, what can be done and what can't be done. So there'll always be like two committees looking at your Permit. Right. Well, it's the one. It's the development <laughs> review board that will look at it. It you may have two conditions that you have to be uh, to have to be addressed. So you look at the downtown district. Do I meet all the criteria of the downtown? And then do I also meet the design overlay review requirements in my proposal? And and some some towns have a separate design review committee. We're, we're not there. We're, yeah, we're not doing that. So it's not really two different reasons. <laughs> and so the village historical district is encompasses something on a storyboard here? Or is it the downtown, the village, like? I'm um, um, confused what you mean by the village historical district. I think there's a Waterbury historical district. There and I'm wondering right. where it fits into this. And that's this. not changed. But where is it? It's I'm sorry, is red? Is it the red? It's not on these maps. <laughs> it's what? It's, it's not, not on these it's maps. Not on so maps. you've okay. just identified something we need to address. <laughs> the purpose of this meeting. And also and it's the, not um, a zoning district. It's not a zoning district. And the utility district is also a utility. It's another district, but that's not on here either, right? Right. That's another separate. Exactly. All right. So it is complicated. Oh. Yes. Okay. Okay. Like, I, I, I can't get it. No, the fact that you can't get it. Yeah. We're, we're not here to, we're definitely not here to tell you that this isn't complicated. <laughs> yeah. It is complicated. Yeah. Um, and it is important. 
and it does take a lot of time. So if you're confused, join the party. It's fine. <laughs> like that's that's. I mean, we spend a lot of time with this, and there are still points of order that we have to identify and that sort of thing. And I, do I, thank you for your time. I do think I put the village. I do think I put EFUD on that map. It's just hard to see. Yeah, so. we'll talk about how that can be anyway. represented with the planning with with Neil and and Mike as to how to get that up on the website. Because it is obviously important yeah. to people. So yes. Amy Anderson, um, 25 North Main. I have a few questions. Um, the first, I think, kind of talks about what you guys were just discussing, the historical district and all the overlays and stuff. But we live in the historical district. So when I looked at the setbacks being zero, um, and we've always have had a challenge because our house is practically on our property line. So I was in one way glad to not have to go through the waiver process, but in the other way I was terrified that a neighbor could come in and build a house touching our house. But because, if I'm understanding correctly, the overlay district would protect that because of the DRB process, that that just wouldn't be something, because it's a historical district, that could possibly be approved is basically what you're saying? No. Am I right? No. Okay. No, not quite. If the zoning district uh, allows for a zero setback, yep. that's allowed. If you want to come in and build something right up to that, that could be approved. Yeah. So the, his, the uh, design overlay district tells you you don't, it doesn't matter what color you paint it. It doesn't, um, you can apply for, what's the other? Um, so, so then we, we are wanting Main Street to have no green space between houses, is what we're saying? Well, so, can I clarify? Go for it. So yeah. the only district that allows for zero foot setbacks is downtown, yeah. right? So just that downtown. So from essentially railroad bridge to Park Ave, only parcels touching Main Street. So in that stretch, yes, we are right. saying you wouldn't have to do setbacks. And the idea behind that is that we're trying to allow for the greatest amount of density in the center. So much like Steel Block and like basically Lower Stowe Street has no setbacks between some of those buildings, and that creates that contiguous building facade, which is, you know, it's representative of the character of that particular area. We're saying we'd like to potentially see that extent. So, so that's the logic behind it. Where so you're talking about, like literally outside this door, the places that are the like where my house is, six houses up on Main Street. You're yes. talking about having them house, 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 house touching each other. Potentially, well, yes. Like and that also, remember, it's, it's not it's not house. It's not a single family house. It's also a district that has business and commerce and government and. Um, churches and you know other non-residential functions so we're trying to attract folks to the downtown the commercial side of that the grocery stores um, it's not all residential but the parts that are you are changing the bylaws to allow <laughs> for houses to be on top of each other is, is the clarity I'm hearing. in fill yep that's correct thank you and then um, from understanding this, it could be up to five units um, as long as you have 4,000 square feet of property. 4,000 square feet is the I mean, a minimum. lot minimum. So 4,000 square feet is a lot minimum. Yep. Um, and then it's not necessarily up to five units. It's, it's dictated by lot coverage. So again, like in the 2016 zoning regulations, we did have density. Right. So it was dwelling units per yeah. X square feet, right? 20,000 square feet. So now we're going to a simpler measurement of essentially lot coverage. So in the downtown area, you can have 100% lot coverage. So again, mimicking sort of that like downtown feel where you have buildings and development covering the entirety of the lot. Mm -hmm. So that would be allowed. Um, and then as far as the number of residential dwellings, uh, that's essentially dictated by the development that's intended there. So it could be commercial first floor, additional dwellings up from there. So what prevents, so what decides, like previously you had a 20,000 20, square foot lot 
to get the density of more than three units. So now you're saying, I couldn't understand the clarity from that. Are okay. five units allowed or not? Five units would be allowed. Okay, that's Or more would be allowed as okay. well. Because yeah. it's good. essentially, again, it's just lot coverage Got it. and minimum lot size plus any setback requirements and height. Okay. So those, those are kind of the guardrails in that, in any yeah. zoning district, right? Thank those you. are the guardrails. Thank you. My okay. third question is, are there grandfathers for things that are already existing, um, such as, um, like it sounded like there was, but the example that Kathy had with single family uses, and I was also thinking of people that have businesses and the requirements I read about, you know, soundproofing and between the floors and stuff. If you're not doing something new, you don't have to go back and invest money, correct? Right, right. Okay. correct. And then not what about short-term rentals? Now I have to put in a permit for a short-term rental that already exists in my property? No, no. So in our new zoning bylaws, we do have a definition for short-term rentals. And you can see that there's nothing in this particular document about registration or permitting. Right. It says it's a permitted use, so if you don't have it permitted, does that mean you can't do it? That's, that's, oh, that's, a, that, that's it means a fair that question. It's, no, it means that it's permitted. It doesn't it's mean allowed. that it it's needs a allowed. permit. It doesn't mean it needs right. it. Right. That's, that's a, that's a, <laughs> it's a hard thing to say. So typically, you have to submit for permit to change use. And if you are changing use from residential to something like short term rental, you would have to submit. We, we do, we are not requiring a permit for a change of use that's if it's great. allowed in the district. I just would recommend that you would add that in so that we can. But it's clear. It's yeah, more yeah, clear. It's, a good one. Yeah. it's more clear. Yeah. Okay. I see your. Thank you. Those are good questions. I appreciate that. Yeah. Kathy. Is there else? Looks like. Looks like they have. You get to. Okay. <laughs> you get to Russell come Russell? back. It kind of piggybacks actually on what Amy is saying, and and I. It has to do with the setbacks on the sides, etc. I feel like in the beginning when you had that Boston consultant. She was thinking like you're going to be a city like Boston. We don't have underground power, et cetera. So, for example, if you don't, if you allow people to build it up to the lines, how are they going to get to the electrical meters? How are they going to get to the um, pipes? You know, the hose bits and stuff like that. My son lives next to somebody, and the line is very close to his house, and the guy wouldn't even let him go over there to have the house painters paint. And so he had to check with Mr. Latchby, and basically the state law is you're trespassing if the guy tells you not to go over there. So you, I think you're, you're going to create lots of legal problems for people that can't maintain their houses. My husband's a fireman, and he's been on for 56 years. How do they get in between? I, I feel like there's just some logistical things that everybody that is still in the zoning laws that are related to when you had the Bostonian girl come here and we're not a city. We don't have underground power down South Maine or North Maine. It's only in the middle. Okay. And I, I just so I really would like you to revisit those and yep. put more, you know, more than four feet between houses. And if you want to see what it looks like, go down to South Maine and you'll see where they have to go like this to go between their houses. And I don't think that's what you want to see. Um, Thank you. One of the, one of I just generally one of the things that I, the planning commission has looked at as an underpinning is how do we maximize growth, housing in particular, in the EFA district where there is there are, well that's what we're looking at. But we're also we're also try, I'm just sort of relaying some of the things that we. You may or may not agree with it, but that we really did consider and spend a lot of time on finding the right balance. The other piece is there are a lot of small lots. There are a lot of lots that are right up next to each other. And if somebody wants to just change a window, they got to get a permit because they don't meet the setback. So we're trying to reduce the um, paperwork that really doesn't change what homeowners have to do. I realize you know some part of the mixed use there are bigger, they are bigger lots and more space between the houses, but a lot of other um, aspects of our mixed use, they are right up on each other. Well, so we're trying to, we're just trying to find the right balance, Kathy, that's couldn't all. You, couldn't you grandfather um, those people? Because what happens is a, a lot of people did something to their property and maybe whoever was on the zoning commission right at that time let it happen and it affected someone else's. And I'll give you, Case in point, 
When the doctor's office was built, they put fill in and put it up. I got flooded in July and I got flooded in December. And both times it was from water coming up the, um, the doctor's office. We got it from behind, this time on that side. And it just, and we keep thinking, oh yeah, we have these great zoning laws and you don't, I don't see anything in there that says let's look around the place where you want to have something built. How does it affect the other people near you? And, and that, that scares me because I'm seeing that. You know, the ambulance is going to be down there. At least this time, the town is now finally going to take over that ditch that they didn't before. And we've been flooded twice. And I, one of the other things I sent you a long time ago was why aren't you looking at the parts of the village where all, there's, the whole village is in the floodplain, but it's not created equal. Are you getting your house bought out? Are you one of the ones getting your house bought out? Me? Like, on the end of, are no. you one that lives on the end of Union? No, I bought up on a hill. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> but some Union, the end of Union Street, where Thatcher Brook and Winooski comes together. My place, where 175 acres are drained off the interstate, comes down that ditch into a way too small culvert. And when it gets full, it backs up to everything. There was, there's areas in the town that get a whole, Randall Street, get a whole lot more water than other people that are in the floodplain, like this end of Bachelor Street, who maybe got three inches every time there was a flood. And I, don't, I just feel like I haven't been listened to, and I've been coming here for like five years and sent letters and documentations out on people aren't getting it. So please, please. <laughs> I mean, my husband wants to move. You, Kathy, I have, a, I have a question. Do you have a specific change that you'd like to see within these setback requirements? Yeah, I would like to have them be what they were when we are too. So 2016 regulations, mm -hmm. you'd prefer that they were set back to those? Yeah. I, I feel like it's just, we have a beautiful village and it's and we're not Boston. <laughs> we are very aware of that. <clears throat> yes, please. Hi, I'm uh, Cheryl Bloor. I live on Clover Lane in Waterbury. Um, so I don't live right in the village. Um, my concern is, and it's not really a concern, but I'm a little sad and I'm a little disappointed because I'm looking at the amount of density that we're trying to get here in this district, and I am concerned about the height. I'm concerned about the closeness of the buildings. I understand the concept of how Stowe Street is, um, but what I really want all of us to remember is we are a New England village, and I don't know if you guys know this, but any time I drive in from town from either side, I get to see the mountains, I get to see the trees, I get to see the fields. And the more that we cover those up, the less we're gonna to have to see those and we're gonna to have to go out to enjoy what we currently enjoy right now in the village. So I'm, I'm a little sad that maybe we haven't taken that into account. We're just trying to jam everything in there as much as possible because people are think, saying we need more places to live. My other um, disappointment is, you know, we don't have the campus district yet. I know that belongs to the state, but that would really be a good opportunity to build a neighborhood, a new neighborhood of single family homes or something like that. Not every family wants to live in an apartment or in a townhouse. They want to have their own space. They want to build their own equity. When they're renting, you can't build that up. I think we'd be losing an opportunity to take a lot of the green spaces that we have and turn those into apartments versus building up neighborhoods, which the, the village also does need. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Cheryl, I do want to point out on here that the maximum height of mixed use is 35 feet and the neighborhood is 35 feet. It's only the downtown. Yeah, okay. well, that's where the downtown is. That's where it is. You got it right. Oh, sorry. Forty-eight. 48. 48. Yeah. From the village. Okay. Um, I'm thinking of the new one that's going to come up. Those beautiful maple trees are going to go away, yeah. and there goes the view that you had coming down Main Street. Okay. So, totally different. A lot of people move here because of yep. the village. Yeah. Main Street. That's a perfect. It's an excellent point. Good, Thank you. Good points. Thank you. Anybody else? Go for it, Mike. Well, I guess I just wanted to kind of summarize what I'm hearing here is that there is some interest in having space between uh, buildings to maintain them or to keep views open or water to pass through or whatever. 
um, and you have an interest in trying to reduce the number of exceptions that are necessary for the DRB to review and that type of thing. So maybe there's some middle ground um, where there's a four foot uh, buffer uh, uh, from the property line uh, so that it'd be like eight feet between houses or whatever. And then if somebody really wanted to build up to their property line, they could apply for that. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we did hear, um, we also heard from the DRB uh, concerns about uh, distance and setbacks. And so that has also been brought to our attention as well. Um, for fire safety, for example, you know, so. Did they um, have more or less? They want more? Excuse me? Did they Can have I more? just finish? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, so it, it, all of this is being taken in. And here in the same conversation is good for us to hear. This is, I mean, so we're sad. all in this together, <laughs> you know. And I'm sorry, I did not thank you because I do know how much time you guys have spent on this. It's been, what, five years? Oh. A minute. More. Somebody else had to <coughs> Hi, sorry, it's Amy again. Amy. Amy, Amy Anderson, 25 North Lane. Um, so I just wanted to, because we have this experience where we are right on the property line on one side of our house and the other side, um, is our parking lot. I just want you to take into account uh, standing seam roofs and the snow that comes off <laughs> onto cars and the liability that poses. We actually couldn't put a fence up between houses on our property line for that reason. It would just be destroyed over and over. Our neighbor at one time, our older neighbor, was requiring us to and the DRB said that it was just, we can't require it because you're going to require them to fix it every single, you know. So, can, I, I didn't 100% get that, and I want to make sure I get it. So, so when we, you put houses too close together. Yeah, no, I know that, but you have a standing seam roof that's I don't, my zero. neighbor does. They have a standing yeah. seam roof with a zero, and with a zero setback, there's it's, no place for the snow to go. Right, right. it comes right. flying right. off, right. and it, and it wasn't right. one, of, one, of the, one of the requirements in our design review overlay right. district is asking, requiring, someone who's going to make a change, who's doing something that requires a permit mm -hmm. to go before the DRB, there has to be a plan for okay. rain, snow, ice removal. Just yes. ice guard, really. Mm -hmm. Snow guard can work. Yeah, no, that's excellent. We're just, we, it just has to be addressed by the applicant. Yeah. That's what we're saying. So it's not like somebody could do something with total disregard for their neighbors. That's not going to happen. Because they have the same things they do now, like, oh, you can't have bright lights coming in the windows or right. that kind of stuff that right. happens. I mean, the street lights are way brighter than anybody else's, but. <laughs> we, <laughs> well, that's that's that. a standard condition DRB applies is huh. downcast and shielded. Yeah, yeah we, we do have that. We actually have like design or development standards or other which address mm -hmm. lighting specifically and yeah. downcast and shielded and we, is a spent, big part of that. Yeah. We spent a lot of time on it and I, I encourage you to read it's about standards I, of development I, I section. I don't know where to find these. It's this right, it's, it's the other the, page. The uh, standards of development uh, are. If you go to the Waterbury uh, Planning Commission uh, page. I know, but I'm just under page the, 26. Under the UDB update, it's on the top left. There's a link. That document pops up. So we have a formatted document. You can pull that off the website as a PDF. He's mm -hmm. going to it right now so you can see it. Thanks. Bylaws. That's it has been there for a while. Um, we did just format it so it's much more user friendly. Just so that I'm really super confused and I really feel dumb asking this question. No, but, don't please. Um, is the downtown replacing and combining the um, mixed use residential and uh, neighborhood. So let's like what, let's like, take a minute. Yeah, that's a really good question. Let's just take a minute and do the slider map. Oh, yeah. I think that's, you put a lot of work into it. And we really thank Dana for this yes. GIS work. You would not believe the time he has put into it. The other thing, and I'll say this credit for that, is we made sure that the zoning districts follow current parcel boundaries now. So there's not a lot that's split has two different zoning districts. Uh, we just, I don't say we, Dana just cleaned up all of those lines. And because of the multiple different zoning districts, now you can see um, that there's fewer districts. So, so the red, 
Okay. Okay, that is how it is. So this is the current downtown district, okay? Now if you watch slowly, Dane is gonna go across <laughs> and the red gets bigger to the north. Which includes Okay. Your property, it sounds like. Thank you. All right. Does that clarify? Yeah. Does that help? This is this is online. We'll yeah. have this on the planning commission page. It'll be the slider map. Yeah. One thing I would like to sorry. Um, one thing I'd just like to point out: we do have a version of this map on our outreach document, the story map, um, which has all these storyboards and that sort of thing. That particular slider map is outdated, so please, when we link this slider map on the main Planning Commission page, just use that one for reference. That has the most up-to-date zoning districts, reflects all the information that we got during the information hearings, etc. Can't Are we take down the other one? Are they dated? Let's, no. let's, um, just we're just going to take down the other one. So okay. we, I, I don't want two maps up there. Just, we can do that. That or, kill or two documents. Yeah, that way I'm probably. <laughs> All right. Do we have other questions? Yeah, you can really get sucked into that slider, let me tell you. I'm just, I can do that. I can too. <laughs> yes, sir, right here. Just a point of clarification. This will drive a lot of other things that need to be addressed, correct? Such as? Buildings that probably need to be uh, addressed that are dilapidated, falling down, those kind of things. No, it new doesn't zoning regulations will not do that. That's a whole different zoning set of rules that have to be developed. So well, that's more like enforcement. Where is Neil? Or ordinance. Or ordinance. They can't or abandoned building or Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's a, that, <laughs> This supports that, but it doesn't drive it. Right. Okay. Makes so, sense. and there may, you. you know, the planning department with uh, discussion, right? Um, will uh, will look at other ordinances mm -hmm. as uh, we have new people as new right. energy and uh, current on legislation and opportunities. I mean, it's actually. I think really excited. Yeah. Um, so they're bringing to us uh, suggestions and concepts and ordinance proposals that can help improve our town. Because I I've lived in had homes in Ohio, had homes in different states with a lot of zoning requirements where I lived in Ohio. A lot of people didn't like them, but it was great because it protected my property, right. protected my neighbor's property. Mm -hmm and it improved the quality of life. You know what to expect. Yeah, I and, get it. And even, even though I had to, uh, when I built a shed, I had to have it 40 feet away from the back well, lot, which is okay, but well, it's fine. My friend Mary I, I had, had the same zoning issue that yeah. <laughs> we, we hear about it. So, <laughs> That's so true. I That's compliment true. you on your work. It's, yeah, it's, it's good that we're doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Alyssa? Alyssa? Um, so my name is Alyssa Johnson. I live on South Main Street. I'm also on the select board. Um, so comment was first just to thank the Planning Commission who, in addition to working five years for the past several months, have been meeting weekly. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to go to most of their meetings and they overlapped with ours, but just to say like weekly two, two and a half to three hour meetings for like years is what these folks have done. So yeah. just thank you and kudos to all of you. Um, Dana Allen has also probably single-handedly saved the town thousands of dollars through his in-kind yeah. GIS yeah. services. So also yeah. special thank you for the slider map. I'm waiting um, for that paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the subject of budgets. Yeah. Um, volunteer paycheck. Um, if you'll allow it, Martha, only because it's slow just to this gentleman's question about enforcement, I just wanted to say the budget that we have warned for town meeting right. um, for this year does include in the proposed budget ten thousand dollars um, to do some legal work regarding zoning enforcement just oh, recognizing separate from this conversation today about what bylaws um, are adopted the bylaws that are on the books need enforcement unfortunately that often usually requires legal action yeah, right. and just from the select board perspective if we have a town are doing that and town staff are doing that we want to make sure they're in good legal standing to do so so just to say there is a proposed expense um, for the community right. for the community to vote on at town meeting um, to have some funding to help support that moving good. forward good. Thanks, 
and otherwise just listening to everyone. And think. No, I used to be on the DRB and, and for a lot of years actually, and it got frustrating because there was no yeah. there's no muscle to the, the regulations. Sorry to ask another question. I live on Randall Street. We could flood it. We've experienced yeah. that a couple times. Now that you have that floodplain area, can you do things with that? The conservation, the allowed, this is, this is what I think is really, really, well, I mean, we, to Kathy's point earlier, we really did think about what it has been the impact to the yeah. community with these floods. Okay. They allowed, I'm not going to get to it fast right. enough, but the allowed uses in the conservation floodplain, mm -hmm. none. Not permanent, no permanent you structure. Structures. None. Permanent you can't structure. go in and do things right. that Move Earth mitigate do possible flooding in the future? No, you can't, no, build, no, you can't build a structure. Oh, I'm not asking to build. I'm saying, can you do things with that ground mm -hmm. that possibly, and I'm not an engineer. So. State owns that land, right? Well, that all not all of it. Because I know but, during but, the floods, the crown of the field, it can be seen at the height. So we're the permitting the use. Not, okay. the, not, not the work. Right. right. Okay. okay. So sense. there. what I meant was that there's no allowed, there's no permitted Ooh. uses um, in that area. Yeah, and I, then there is a conditional use of recreation or park or public, public mm -hmm. outdoor recreation and park. Okay. So we're trying to not put things in the floodplain. Well, you, you wouldn't want to. Uh, my, my question is, can whoever owns you the dig property stuff do out. things to possibly help us mitigate right. the uh, flooding in the future. So, right. But that's a bigger question probably. A lot of people are trying to work Exactly. On. I think the state is also looking at that. Yeah, I, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> so yeah. Roger? <laughs> yeah, Roger Clapp. I live on Randall Street. I'm also on the select board. Uh, I just wanted to respond to his question. Uh, we are looking at uh, possible mitigation uh, involving that uh, the cornfield uh, to create uh, more volume mm -hmm. uh, for the water to reside and possibly uh, look at uh, ways to uh, restrict the flow of water into the Randall Street and downtown areas. Uh, just the way that the state did uh, when they uh, redid the uh, complex, uh, which has protected the state complex uh, from the most recent floods. Yeah. Thank you. Roger, are you looking at our way too? We're looking at the entire uh, Winooski Corridor and Thatcher Brook. I, I just want to add one thing for what happened to us after they redid the road. They, because they took out so many layers of pavement, the road is lower. So now we get even more water because mm -hmm. it comes out that the, the drains are below where the river is. So it's, it's just Thanks. like, that's what I'm saying, look at what else happens because it... Uh, Mike, I think you have a question. Yeah, um, there's a proposal for a wildlife passage uh, at the northern end of the, the town. I was just curious if there was a conservation district uh, that aligned with that because it would be silly to uh, build a very expensive structure and then have housing or something right there. You're referring so to you're, the you're, on you're, you're talking about phase two area well, it's, on the north side of the interstate? It's going to be connecting the north and the south. Yeah. So. Um, I just wanted to, you know, the agency built a, a wildlife passage as part of the Essex project there, 189, or 289, and the housing got built up all around it, so it can't be used for wildlife anymore. So I'm just curious if it was conservation district where this proposed uh, wildlife culvert. Um, very, very possibly. We just haven't addressed that at this point. Yeah. We have a conservation floodplain because that was, we called it that, and it, it's, um, we want to call attention to, we have a huge floodplain in this part of our town. We know we have other conservation needs, we just haven't named them or gotten to what the district boundaries might be, but we, we're very clear. 
Well, I'm not. Things like Wait that. Wait a minute. No, I, I guess I'm, I'm missing what Mike is saying. We got a couple million bucks for a feasibility study to look at. But is it in the phase one area? No. No. Well, there's heads nodding yes. And so well, yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on. Yeah. It goes under the interstate. That's what I thought. Route two. That's what I thought. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, not not the, okay. No. I'm so sorry. hold on. It's yeah. Okay. So we don't have that, um, and it would be great to get it from them. No, and, and, and part of the reason that we don't have that taken into consideration is that's a relatively recent development. Yeah. And so these district boundaries were set, I think, preliminarily as many as three years ago. Yeah. And then we've tweaked them recently, but only for the phase one area. There is a phase two area. So that's part of the whole unification thing. So, and that's everything outside of essentially the highway. Right. So I think that's good information for us to have. Can you send that to us? Yeah, the location is where? Oh, Katie's generally? got it. Katie's got it. Dana. Yeah. Lisa's floating from the right Lisa. Road. It's Sharkyville Road. So oh, Sharkyville, okay. Is that in the, the, the left-hand side there, Neil? Mm -hmm. um, it's where Sharkyville Road comes into Route 2. <laughs> and I'm not sure on that spot I think, where, down, where, Neil, where the yeah, highway, yeah, where 89 like is, line. if it's on the left. or it, It's right near the Bolton line. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't know they were moving forward. And there, we have a story about it. In the, the, um, it's going to be going under multiple lanes. It's going to be going under the highway, and I think also under Route Two. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be coming into that the green zone that you've you've got delineated there. It's a development. It's it's a big it's a big lane that they're going to create like under the highway. It's like an underpass for it's an underpass for wildlife. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't look like there's any development allowed in this new. Well, that's what I just wanted to yeah. clarify yeah. because if that's where it is. Yeah. But I think yeah. your point Maybe also yeah. is that when we get to phase two, we want to be cautious of the yeah. other side of the highway of what is being per, uh, you got it, yeah. zones are over there. You got it. So right yep. here. Yeah. There actually is a culvert there that goes oh, underneath um, the highway and route two. There's a, a big pipe yeah. there. And, and this case, many millions, many tens of millions of dollars short of actual building it. Just essentially a feasibility study. I mean, they call it design. Yeah. 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 All yeah. through the design with the amount of money that yeah. they yeah. put together at this yeah. point. Thanks for that. This, that's good. It's a concurrent care. Do we have other comments or questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>